Hey, welcome back, everybody. I I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. The most important part of your business, any business, isn't just the services, isn't just the products. It's your financial foundation, how you track that, what you're doing with that. If you don't have that in order, all the other stuff you're doing it's almost a waste of time because you could be making money and it's flying out the door and you don't even know it. There are so many reports available that can give you insight on that. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that. She is somebody that helps companies, all different types, especially even more industrial companies as well, warehousing logistics with their bookkeeping, their finances. She's the owner and founder of Equilibrium Consultants. And we're going into the report, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> Scardaville is back with us. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm aware of the, the P&L, the profit and loss report statement and some other ones, but I think I, like most business owners, we just skim the surface. We don't really know what's going on underneath the hood. So I'm I'm glad we're talking about this today to kind of give it some insight. Yeah. Oh my gosh, for sure. So the business owner is interested in Am I making money or not? I don't care about anything else. Am I making money or not? And I have to say, yep. well, yeah, but there's a little bit more involved than that. You know, so the short answer is yes. But do you want to know why? And do you want to know how? And do you want to know where the main drivers are coming from? Do you, do you want to work smarter? Or you want to work harder? You know what I mean? You get, we, we have to see what the trends are. We got to see all this data. And, and unless we... I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you're going to have to carve out maybe like a good half hour, maybe even an hour to really dissect this and figure out what you want to do with this information. Mm. The decision is ultimately yours. You know what I mean? So and, 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 and it's important. That's, that's where I think a lot of uh, business owners miss the mark um, or they leave it to their bookkeeper and that's fine to some degree, but, it's not their business, it's your business. So you really want to have a better grip on what's going on because sure. it's, it's everything. So where do we start? What what report? How do you want to begin? Yeah. Okay. So the bookkeeper, the bookkeeper um, is often a very overlooked and underappreciated job. For sure. Um, mainly because, um, oh, but it's so easy. I mean, you're just doing data entry and blah, blah, blah. Um, when in reality, uh, that's, um, that's, not the most accurate statement in any degree. So the bookkeeper um, focuses on the past, right? The transactions that took place as of uh, today, you know, an hour ago and yesterday and beyond. Um, the reason why they have, the reason why they're so important, especially like a good bookkeeper is to make sure that all the transactions are properly allocated. So if they know that, if you bought a car and the car was like 17 grand, if they know how to properly document it, um, I already know how to not only depreciate it, write it off, what's the interest, you know, all that stuff. The bookkeeper's good. My job is good. My job is like a thousand times easier. So the foundation at first value has to be as solid as humanly possible. So if I don't have that key person uh, knowing what the job is, knowing what the gig entails, uh, um, yeah. already I'm starting on the wrong foot. Well, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't going to say that cause I, I you know, eventually <laughs> we would get to it, but yeah. all of this is only as good as the starting point, And that's where the, the data is entered. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, again, I'm not the expert, but a critical and one of the hardest parts where it has to be accurate. It has to be, placed in a certain spot, um, accurate again, you know, you know, that's, yeah, absolutely. you know, you're only good as good as your information at right. that point. No, for sure. Hmm. And then, so once the, once the transactions are solid and now we can finally do the modeling, we can finally focus on the reports. So one of the first reports that we like to look at is, um, uh, the statement of cash flows, for example, right. And the interesting thing about the uh, statement of cash flows is that it tells you what comes in, what goes out, and uh, what in particular is uh, the activity day by day. But it does it through um, the, what your investing activities are, 
um, what your financing activities are, and also what your day-to-day -day operations are, which is your operating activities. So, for example, it'll tell you what the net income is for the operating activities. It'll tell you, for example, your accounts receivable, what the client, what your clients owe you, right? Because that's still a major asset. Hmm. And then if there's like, I don't know, other other asset adjustments like uh, sales tax or you're paying things with a credit card. These are operating things, you know? Oh, what you by need by to the way, I'm with. just going to interject in here because you're at that point. Um, tax, not sales tax, but tax. Yeah. This is the 16th of September and your quarterly taxes are due. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I'm well aware. <laughs> I have to write that insert word check <laughs> before before they pick up the mail today. Yo, for sure. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I do it a check. I could do it online, blah, 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 but uh, <laughs> like a paper record. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah. And then sales tax. Uh, yeah, that's another that's another part that uh, mm -hmm. we don't we don't consider. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's that's uh, and you can the, with the sales taxes, you can pay them on a monthly basis if you make over X amount of dollars because it's different with each state. Um, and where where we are in New Jersey, it's it's critical that you get it correct. Otherwise, they'll penalize you for like a penny. If you are mm. penny off, they'll be like, okay, penalties, interest, blah, blah, blah. Now you're paying like stupid amounts of money. So, um, so there's that, right? So now you have, uh, now you have like your liabilities that you got to worry about. And then you have your, your um, credit cards to worry about, but you know, whatever we, we already discussed that. And so now after these day-to-day -day interactions, right, the in and outs, of Monday through Friday or you know whatever seven days a week, what however amount of hours your business is open, this will tell you um, what the cash flow is going to be, right from the day to day operations. So for example, if you have a net income of like ninety three thousand dollars in one month, right, and your AR is crazy high, like one hundred and sixteen, but then you have you know, tax liability of, I don't know, let's say $1,500. And then you have um, credit cards of like 23,000. Your, your cash at the end of the day is something like two grand. That's no bueno. Mm -hmm. You know, we gotta, we gotta work on that. So, and that's just the in and outs. That's not even the investing activities. What if the owner decides to invest into the company because it recognizes that the cash flow is low? You know what I mean? So that's a big outflow of the cash. Wow. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, um, we got to work on that too, you know, stuff like that. And then you have your financing activities, which is different from your investing activities, right? The investing activities has to do with um, owner's equity and has to do with other, other things involving the owner. Maybe the owner wants to, um, I don't know, like, uh, I'm going to put, uh, money into the business involving I want to grab a bigger machine I want to buy a bigger machine I want to I want to put things into the company that are uh, going to make it run more efficiently but it's it's a it's a huge to do you know that's investing activity and then for financing activity let's say for the sake of argument you're um, you know you're a partner who invested a lot of money into the business um, that would help with the cash flow does that help the owner? Mm -hmm. Not so much, <laughs> you know? So, and then the partner distributions, because if as a business owner, you do have that right where you can draw your salary from the money, excuse me, from the company, my mistake. And then well, sometimes maybe you take too much. And this is where we identify what is the appropriate amount based on the AR, based on your expenses, based on, um, all these adjustments that you're considering, your sales tax, your fixed expenses, your, you know, whatever. Excuse me. So the financing activities could equate to just the credit card, you know, but all in all, the cash flow at the end of the day, like these are, these are some serious challenges that I'm describing, right? But um, it does have a positive cash flow increase. Right. Just because we've um, invested into the business in this scenario and we've um, 
put in so much in this into this startup, for example. But the drag is that even though we've had a positive cash flow increase, it's it's been like thirteen thousand dollars at the end of the day. That's thirteen thousand dollars of the owner's money. The business didn't make that money. The owner contributed to that money. So let's let's talk about that for a moment. Let's say you realize that you need to grow the business and you want to offer another service, but in order to provide that service, you have to make an investment into, let's say, equipment. Very hypothetical. The investment, can that come from the operating account? Is that work as one scenario? And and that operating account could also be where, you know, the owner pulls a draw, you know, and that's their salary. Mm -hmm. Are those possible, those scenarios possible? And the money that was invested into the company yep. uh, to, for this new service, new equipment, what is the tax implication on that? Is there, can you uh, write some of that off, whether it was successful or not? How does that aspect work? Yeah, you can. You definitely can. Because the point is, is that we can prove that we purchase it for the company. Sure. First of all, sure. we can prove that we did that. Um, we can depreciate the piece of equipment over, um, depending on how big it is, it starts at five years, you know, okay. and you can depreciate that amount uh, over a certain amount of time. If this were real estate, like if you, if you own your house, for example, that's about 20, depending on the scenario, right? right. So every scenario is different. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, but all in all, um, the so let, let's go on up. Let's go numbers here. Just uh, because I'm sure a lot of companies are, are thinking or or small business owners thinking, you know, what? Uh, we, we really need to step up our game. We have to make an investment. We have to let's say, you know, it's a twenty thousand dollar investment in equipment. Okay. Well, I think I go, you know, just pick any number. One, it, it could be 100, whatever, whatever you want to work with. Sure. Um, what can be deducted in terms of taxes for the investment in new equipment? Okay, so the tax deduction is um, first you got to consider the depreciation, and the depreciation is usually a straight line depreciation of uh, five years. So there's that, um, and then um, that will accumulate and pass over or carry over, excuse me, to the remaining five years. So if we do it today for 2024 next year, it will carry over until it's over and done with. So there's that, which is pretty great. Um, and then you have uh, the processes that are done through that piece of equipment. Um, and the process starts when all the combinations come together, right? And that's um, direct labor, direct materials, um, indirect labor, indirect materials, right? So the difference is if I'm, if I'm doing the work on the machine, I'm actually getting my hands dirty, I'm turning the wrench, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, it, indirect labor would be like overhead or um, uh, how much insurance do I cost the company? You know, how much insurance, how much, uh, how much do I contribute in keeping the lights on? How much do I contribute in keeping the, I don't know, uh, the, the gas on the, the, um, the uniforms in, intact, you know, all, all of that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, not only what do I cost the company, but what, but what contribution do I make towards the company? Right. So there's there's a lot of factors involved in this for sure. Right. So and by the way, that's just the statement of cash flows. That is only the one report that we just did. And we already got all this data through it. We didn't even touch the PL. We didn't even touch the balance sheet. Right. Because this is all the com all the business owners care about. Am I making money? Right. Am I making money? Sure. Or not? You know, but, so, let, let's go there. Um, <laughs> you know, P and L. Yeah. Profit and loss, um, right. and then you mentioned balance sheet. Yeah, uh, profit and loss. I mean, we surely can explain it and and some of the the value uh, in that report. Um, balance sheet. But what what language did you switch over to just now? Because I don't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I promise it's all English. I promise. <laughs> okay. Um, what, balance sheet. What 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 is that? I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm financially illiterate here. I'm telling you. Ah, it's cool, man. It's I admit cool. it. <laughs> so the okay so the balance sheet is the health of the business in real time and again this goes back to the financial foundation like the key individuals who in, input the data right so yeah. so we have to we have to give props to 
the bookkeeper we have to give props to the advisory and like what i'm doing is advisory stuff cfo stuff right um and advisors uh, like myself and cfo individuals like myself obviously bookkeepers like myself um we partner with the the small business owner and sharing this information and sharing this data with them so they can make educated and informed decisions right so in this case the balance sheet is the health of the business right this red hot second you know so yeah. it shares your assets which is what you own your liabilities which is what you owe and your equity which is your net worth like what you're worth you know what i mean legitimately mm -hmm. what you're worth got it right so your assets they're your bank accounts your accounts receivable your other current assets that could include like the loans to your partners that could include your um oh gosh like oh your undeposited funds um like stocks bonds um that could be like lots of different things it's like a combination of like cash combination of receivables combination of a bunch of different things regardless it's all positive for the business it's what the business earns and that belongs to it and then you have the liabilities which is what the business owes you know so that's your your vendors your accounts payable your credit cards um your your debt you know like uh your your taxes that you owe your um your other long-term liabilities maybe you bought a car and you're financing the car or you're financing the piece of equipment or you're financing um, something else that's pertinent to your business or whatever, you know, those, those are the things that you owe and you're paying monthly for it. And the whole point is to keep the liabilities on the lower end. We gotta, we gotta make sure that they, that the liabilities are lower than the assets. Assets should be higher than the liabilities. And then the equity is the net worth, right? So, uh, and those should always be on a credit basis. So we, when you see them as a negative on the bottom, it's it's good because it means that the partners are making money. It means that the investors, the stakeholders are making money. Um, and right at the very bottom, you're going to see the net income and is the profit that the company has made over the year. So and that's over the year so far. And that's why we like the balance sheet, because the balance sheet is like paramount to everything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was thinking that wanted to ask it. Yeah. The most important view of the business is the balance sheet. That's right. just, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's it. That's the Bible. There sure. it is. And yeah. then next to that, underneath that comes what? The P and L. It, okay. Yeah, All right. Sure. So in the P and L, right. The P and L will show you what came in and what went out in a period of time, any period of time you want. So, uh, and some people, they have uh, different uh, financial years, you know, like if you're a school, it's not January to December, it's like September to June, you know? And then they have this off period in, in the summer, you know what I mean? Um, so, and in other parts of the of the country, it's, it's different. It's like August to, like they start in August and they end in May, you know, sure. that kind of thing. So the PNL will show um, basically how much you earned in income for that period of time and how much you spent in that period of time. But it shows you three categories. It'll show you the income. It'll show you the cost of doing business, which is the cost of goods sold. And the cost of doing business is what is absolutely a thousand percent necessary to run your business. Like your business cannot survive without this. And then, the expenses afterwards. So for the sake of argument, um, let's say you have contractors, you have uh, office supplies, you got, I don't know, you got uh, uh, auto leases, you have, gosh, you got like so many things. Um, stamps, you got to send packages, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Even meals with your clients. Meals with your clients are, are important to keep track. Your mileage, you know, your mileage, your gas. Sure. Any work you do on your car. You got to keep a record of all of that. And, and, and we talked that. about that previously mm -hmm. at this point in time, it's a hard record as a for where I'm going with that. A credit card statement isn't going to work with the IRS. They need, 
the actual receipt. That's yeah. It. Yeah. And of course there's apps and things you can take a picture of it and all that and print it out and just yeah. store it on your phone or on a cloud or whatever it is. Um, yeah. But I don't know if I told you this, but I have a friend and when she gets in my car, she jokes because the, the dashboard, uh, the air ducts, is where I keep all my receipts. And she goes, is that your file cabinet? Is this like a mobile <laughs> file cabinet? Because everywhere I go, whether it's, you know, go for dinner and it's you know, a client or whatever, you get gas and I just stick them in the vents. And then after a while, it's like, all right, well, air's not going to come through. We're going to take those out and then put them somewhere, put them in an envelope. I should, I should scan them with an app. Got to get, I got to get there. Uh, and I'm a tech geek, so I, I should be doing it like stupid. <laughs> Right. Because it's like 14 steps. I got to remember to make sure I remove it and then put it in its proper place, i.e. Mm -hmm. a certain envelope that's labeled where I could just, you know, done, finished it. The, the piece of paper wouldn't even make it into my car. It's in the garbage already. Yeah. For you working with somebody, you handle the bookkeeping side and then the other side of the bookkeeper. Like, for example, somebody already has a bookkeeper, you would pick up from where they leave off. Do I have that right? Yeah, yeah. So there's advisory services. There's fractional CFO services. And um, like, for example, what we're doing right now, going through the reports. So if I did if I did an advisory service for your business, it's exactly what we're doing right now. You know, so we would okay. go into detail about everything that your books is showing us, provided that the data is good. So I would have to re review the data. And then after reviewing the data, I would have to um, go through the reports and I, I wouldn't do this with you. I would do it line by line myself and then create the reports and uh, make them pretty, you know, put in a bunch of things. And then after that, I do the ratios. Right. Um, and I love the ratios myself. I love I love I love them because um, then only does it have like pretty pictures, you know, but uh, the, sometimes the the business owner needs a visual and just needs something really clear cut because the report can be really thick. Sometimes the report's like 20, 30 pages, you know? And so I, I walk them through it, like how we were just doing right now. And then at the end of the day, I go through the uh, financial ratios that just spell things out for them. So for example, in this scenario that we were just describing, um, we did the financial ratios and the financial ratios, they're mathematical comparisons for the financial statements that we just did. Right. And they assess the company's performance, their financial health and their like operational efficiency. So mm. the first one is the profit ratio and the profit ratio. I, I don't have to go through all of them because I know we're running out of time, but like the profit ratio, first of all, it shows, that for every dollar of income, the business keeps X amount of cents as the profit. So that's the profit ratio. Hmm. So in this scenario, um, for every dollar of income that this company earned, they kept 32.45 cents on the dollar. So that's a 32.45% profit margin, which is pretty gosh darn good. You know? Wow. Yeah. This is so, like, uh, finance doesn't excite me. <laughs> this is exciting me because yeah. <laughs> it, it really gives you detail of how hard you're working and what you're keeping uh that literally down to the penny we're at we are out of time i can keep going <laughs> it's like this is so important and I, I believe many business owners don't realize the importance of drilling down going into detail we're creatures of habit we're just on yeah. autopilot well yeah um you know i can pay my bills but could you pay them better could you have more money, you know, and yeah, left over, uh, sure. taking a look at this. What's, um, what's your, what's your website, Kat? Uh, www.equilibriumconsultantsnj.com. And, um, my cell phone is 848-565-0113. And the email address is info at eqconsultantsnj.com. And, uh, we're launching a new website pretty soon so it should be wrapped up by today so we'll probably be launching it next week so i'm so excited it looks pretty <laughs> oh, very cool very cool yeah. make, sure, make sure you deduct for that yeah oh for sure <laughs> <laughs> and you're you're available virtually anywhere if somebody has uh, questions um and you can help that that's the beauty of today's technology you can do it anywhere for anybody 
Exactly. Um, super cool. Yeah. Um, love the way you look at things. It's real. <laughs> and it's, yeah, you're a people person, but also a finance person. And that's truly what, what makes you different. And um, always love talking nice. with you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was fun. We'll catch up <laughs> soon. We'll be right back. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.